To begin, pour some of your sodium hydroxide solution into a beaker. This makes it easier when pipetting in the next stage. Taking a 25 cm cubed volumetric pipette, hold the end closest to the pipette filler as you insert it to prevent stick injuries. Then, pipette 25 cm cubed with the sodium hydroxide solution and place it into the 250 cm cubed conical flask. Several drops of thenolthaline indicator are then added to the conical flask. The indicator turns from colourless to magenta, indicating the presence of an alkali. As sodium, potassium and ammonium compounds are soluble in water, we will not have any sodium containing solid reactant left at the end to filter off from our solution. Therefore, we need to determine precisely the amount of acid needed to get the sodium hydroxide to completely react. To do this, a filter funnel is placed into the top of a burette no higher than eye level and the burette is then filled with hydrochloric acid. Open the tap on your burette and allow a small amount of acid to fill the burette below the tap. This will help you gain an accurate measure of the volume of acid used. A piece of white paper or a white tile is placed below the burette. This will allow you to more easily observe when a colour change occurs. The starting volume on the burette is recorded. The hydrochloric acid is then slowly run into the conical flask and the burette tap closed when the indicator colour changes from magenta to colourless. The final volume of acid in the burette is also recorded. An alternative indicator to use would be methyl orange. In that case, a colour change of yellow to orange would be observed. Into a new conical flask, pipette 25 cm cubed of sodium hydroxide solution. This time, do not add the indicator solution. Place the conical flask under the burette and note the initial burette reading. Now run the same volume of acid into the conical flask as when you did it the first time around. This ensures you have added enough acid to fully neutralize the sodium hydroxide solution. Once we have created our sodium chloride solution, we need to obtain the sodium chloride crystals. The apparatus is set up as shown, with an evaporating basin placed above a half full beaker of water. The sodium chloride solution is poured from the conical flask into the evaporating basin and then heated using a Bunsen burner on a roaring flame. The solution is then left to evaporate until crystals are seen to form in the evaporating basin. The basin is then left in a warm place for the remainder of the water to evaporate over time. The image on screen shows an example of sodium chloride crystals produced using this method. This method also works for producing other crystals such as sodium sulfate or ammonium sulfate.